Welcome to Flip It Furniture. My name is Amy. Today I'm participating in the Dixie Bell Mystery Box Challenge. Dixie Bell sent me a box full of goodies. I have no idea what's in this box. The challenge is to make over a piece of furniture using all the contents in this box. So let's open the box. The first thing I see when I open the box is the nautical life transfer. So this tells me my theme is going to be nautical. I also received a bag of goodies from Dixie Bell and it had it was it says feeling naughty like nautical naughty <laughs> it has decor in it so they also gave a little bag with a couple staging items which I thought was really really awesome it made this really fun for me So here's everything that was in my box and I have to use all these items on one piece of furniture. I'm really excited to get into the products and how to use them. So that's what you'll be seeing in this video. We're gonna use this piece of furniture. It's actually, it's pretty large. It looks smaller in this video, but it's big. So I remove all the hardware and I take all the drawers out so that I can clean the piece. And I'm gonna use Dixie Belle's White Lightning Cleaner. I just mix some of this powder into my water bottle and I'm gonna spray the piece down and just scrub it with a rag. My, this piece is actually in pretty good condition. It was in one of the free groups um, on, in my neighborhood. So it wasn't on Facebook Marketplace, but it was in a, a free group that somebody, they put it outside and they said, come and get it because it's going out to the garbage. So of course I ran over there and I grabbed it. <laughs> I did have to remove some of the drawer stoppers just so I could paint nice clean lines. I wanted to add some blue tape. I think that's really important when you're painting something to just have some nice clean lines because you don't want it to look messy. This one I'm definitely going to be selling, so I don't want it to look messy for a customer. Now I'm using Dixie Belle's Slick Stick and the Foam and Dandy brush. I'm using Slick Stick because the finish on this piece is so shiny and slippery. I know that I could scuff sand it, but I would rather, for me, sometimes, you know, pulling stuff outside to sand it and then bringing it back in is a bit of a hassle. And Slick Stick is an amazing product. It's a bonding primer. So if you're painting metal or a mirror or um, plastic and even just a really shiny surface, then you would use your slick stick. You would apply two coats, waiting two hours in between the coats, and then I wait at least 12 hours before applying my paint. And everything bonds to it. It sticks so good. I have no issues with chipping or peeling or anything like that. Slick stick is like my go-to product for anything slippery. I'm using the Foam and Dandy brush because I don't want there to be any brush strokes. That's the only thing you gotta be careful about when you're using Slick Stick, but now that they have the Foam and Dandy brush, it just makes it super, super easy. And I like to just sort of push my Foam and Dandy brush. So here's the next day, and it's two coats of Slick Stick. I'm ready for paint. So I'm starting with the drawers out, and I'm gonna be using Sandbar. Um, I'm, I'm not really exactly sure at this point what I want to do with this piece. So I'm just doing a little bit of a base coat because I want to remove that blue tape as, you know, before I put the drawers in. I, need, I know I'm going to need to paint this piece with the drawers in. Now I'm using Stormy Seas on the second drawer trim. And that's because I've been thinking about it and thinking about it and I think I know what I want to do with this piece. I'm not 100% yet so I'm going to give a couple things a try. 
and then um, but I know I'm gonna use stormy seas so it'll look just fine on the inside to me with all of these products the obvious choice is to do something like really grungy and I don't know like nautical grungy you know with the patina maybe some drips and stuff that's like the obvious choice and for some reason that is not what I want to do I have never ever done a seascape before I don't know why I have it in my head that this needs to be sort of a seascape so I'm gonna give I'm gonna give it a try why not you know, I think it's really important to step out of your comfort zone and try new things. And especially with the mystery box challenges, they're so fun. And, you know, you got to think outside the box a little bit, right? So that's my plan. We're going to go and we're going to do a seascape for this piece. So I've learned two things. Um, watching people paint seascapes and basically it's to outline first and then I'm going to tape off a guide so that's really the only two things that I know about it so that's what I'm gonna do right now that's right now I'm gonna do some sand and then so that I know where you know the, where the sand is gonna end and the water begins so I'm using my sandbar to paint in my sand. This blue tape is my guide. The guide will separate the sky from the ocean. My first color is manatee gray. I'm using manatee gray in the navy and a little bit of fluff. At this point, I think that I'm gonna do this, like it's kind of like a stormy day because I wanna use the Kraken. There's a Kraken taking down a ship um, with the transfers and it's so cool. So I was thinking I'll make it like stormy, you know, like it's a stormy day. But as I applied the paint and I did mix them up a little bit to see if I could, what different colors I could get. Um, I thought you know what it's too dark maybe I don't want the sky to be that dark because if this ends up going in someone's bedroom as an accent piece <laughs> I, I thought in my head maybe it should be like a sunny day you know um, maybe something somebody wouldn't want to see something dark every single day so I ended up taking it off I just used um, a little paper towel and I removed the paint really quick let it dry and then I started out again so Cobalt blue is the color I'm going with, and it wasn't in the mystery box, but that's okay. I'm gonna use it anyway, and I'm just gonna mix, I got some cobalt blue and a little bit of fluff. My fluff is watered down from a previous project, but that's okay. It actually worked out really, really well that way. I didn't have to use my water mister at all because the fluff was watered down. So I'm mixing the colors together, and I'm making a really, like a light blue. As I went ahead, I realized that I didn't want to fully mix the colors. I wanted there to be a little bit of the cobalt blue and a little bit of white and a little bit of them mixed on my brush because it made it made it look like a sky. It made it look supernatural and it was so easy to do. And with this project, I want it to be simple because you know I'm not an oil painter or anything like that by any means so I wanted this to be a simple seascape that anybody could do you know anybody could replicate this if you wanted to so as I move forward you can see where I used a little I went a little heavy on the cobalt blue or a little heavy on the fluff and that kind of gives the illusion of clouds and the sky, you know, and it could go any way you want because the sky looks different every single day. So there's no specific way that it needs to look. The one thing that I did do with this, I didn't want there to be like big puffy clouds. So I never went in a swirling motion with the fluff. 
I only went back and forth with both of the colors because maybe it's a clear sky, you know, with just a little bit of white clouds. And here I realized maybe my arm was in the way and I was trying to get it out of the way, but I actually put it in the way. Sorry about that. So unfortunately, the only time I used Manatee Gray was on the base coat. So it didn't really get used and I swapped it out for Cobalt Blue. I know that is not part of the rules, but sometimes, you know, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> now I'm going in with a little bit of the fluff. I love Dixie Belle's paint because it is so easy to blend. It just meshes together so nicely. So now at the blue tape, I'm adding a lot more fluff and that is to give the illusion that the sky is endless. And you'll see what I do even with the ocean and that's supposed to also give the illusion of depth, that it's far, you know, you, as far as the eye can go. So that's why we make it a little bit lighter at the blue tape. So my sky is finished and now I'm going to start the ocean. I'm using Stormy Seas first. I do want the ocean, this was kind of perfect because with that Kraken taking down the ship, I kind of want the ocean to be murky, you know, like the creepy ocean. We want it to be dark and bottomless and that's where the Kraken lives. There's a big sea monster under there. So I do want a little bit of creepiness to the ocean, but not too much because again, if it goes in someone's room, you know, we don't want to be over the top scary. And here's where I'm adding in, in the Navy. We, in the navy is going to give the illusion of some waves. So just having two different colors or three different colors in your water is gonna give the illusion of depth. So I'm not fully ready for the in the navy yet. I still need to fill in my base coat here with the stormy seas. And then I'll come back with the in the navy. Right now I'm switching out my brush and I'm using, um, Dixie Belle has this little set of artist brush, brushes. And I'm using this tiny one because I want to separate the sky and the ocean. So again, we're gonna go and we're gonna make it a little bit lighter. So I'm mixing stormy seas with fluff and I'm just gonna go right over that line. And again, just like I did with the sky, by brightening this part of it up and then having the rest pretty dark, it's gonna give the illusion that, you know, the ocean goes as far as the eye can see. And if you notice, I haven't used my water mister much, but at this point, my, my paint is drying, so I just needed to give a little spritz. Now I'm gonna touch up my skyline a little bit more, add some more of that fluff. So you can't really tell where the ocean ends and the sky begins. I'm finishing up for the most part with my um, stormy seas because I wanna start going on to in the Navy. I wanna create some depth and the illusion of some waves with the in the Navy.
for the most part, I'm going back and forth with my brush. So now to give that illusion of waves, I'm going a little bit darker and on a little curve with my in the navy. And then I'll blend that out. So it's just back and forth again. So a little bit on a curve, a little bit darker, and then back and forth. And these are easy waves. Um, if you wanted them to be really big, you would go up and down. but. I don't want this to be really complicated. I think that it will still look great and we're still gonna add some of that sapphire pearl glaze. So we're just going to stick with blending it out and just on a curve. Now my last step for the ocean is to add a little bit of fluff onto those waves. If we just do a line of fluff and then blend it out, it'll give the illusion of movement. I use the artist brush just to make a little line and then I use my regular brush to blend it out. I add this little curved um, edgy line to any parts where it's just really dark. I could put it on the top or on the bottom of the in the navy where it's darker. Now we have some depth and some movement. And now I need to start working on the shoreline. So I'm using my artist brush and I'm just coloring in the shoreline with in the navy and then I'm going to add some fluff and then I'm going to add a little bit of stormy seas to blend it. Now here, I'm just wetting my brush with the Stormy Seas on it, and I'm adding it to that shoreline, and then I'm gonna mix it with my sandbar, because if you ever go to the beach and you look at the shore, there's always rocks and stubble, and you know, it's never just perfectly one on the other, so we just wanna fade that line a little bit. These are the finishing touches. I'm gonna leave it, let it dry, and come back with the Nautical Life Transfer. I need to add the transfer before I do anything else because I wanna paint 
over the transfer a little bit. I take my transfer off of the backing paper and I just adjust it and I figure out where I want it to go on the piece. Then I stick it on there like a sticker and I use the tool provided in the can and I just rub that transfer onto the piece. I'll be able to peel the paper up and the transfer will stick. I just take my time and do this. I'm in fast mode right now or this video will be way, 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 way too long. But you just take your time and make sure that the transfer is fully on your piece. I'm using a sanding pad so gently. I'm hardly touching it, but I just wanna make sure that I get rid of the transfer in the creases and I'm sticking it onto the piece entirely. I'm making sure that there's no bubbles, there's no part that wants to come up. Um, I'm sanding off any pieces that are sticking up or anything like that, but don't sand too hard. I was hardly touching it because you don't wanna sand off your transfer. Now we're using the Sapphire Pearl Glaze, and I'm so happy that they put this in my mystery box because it really gave the ocean that magical element. It just looks so good. And I just went back and forth with it, and I let it dry. Pearl Glaze is amazing. Glaze can be used even as a sealer, but I am gonna seal over the entire thing anyway. Sapphire Pro Glaze just made this really, it just pulled it together. Now for the patina and the patina spray in green. This is the iron patina and I'm using an old blue sponge that I have. I'm just cutting it up so that I can use those instead of a brush. I'm gonna add one coat of the iron patina right onto the piece wherever I want it. I'm using like a dabbing motion, a stippling, and because I want it to look almost rocky or like sand or you know something <laughs> the iron patina it, it doesn't stay dark gray or black whatever you want to really call this color once you put the green spray on it turns into rust so it turns into like a, a brownish color so I, I thought it would look really good like up on the sand just as some texture so after the first coat you let it dry and then you come back with a second coat this is what i'm doing right now and i have my gloves on so while my second coat is still wet i'm gonna apply the green patina and instead of using the little sprayer in the bottle, I'm just going to apply it with my sponge because that way I have a little bit more control over it. And I still, I don't want it, I want it to look stippled. I want it to look like I've been dabbing it on there because we're still gonna add some more paint and things like that afterwards. After I've applied all of the green patina spray, I let it sit and it starts to work two to six hours. You start to see that change in color. I was done for the day though, so I let mine sit for 24 hours, and here's what it looks like the next day. So now we're gonna blend some of this out. We're adding, with our chip brush, I'm adding um, sandbar, because I still want this to look like the sand, but I, I love the texture of the iron underneath. So now we're gonna do a little bit of blending, and I'm gonna see you know, how I feel about this. You could also use your rag if you put too much of anything you can rag it right off and it still gives that textured grungy look So I've only added just a little bit of the patina spray and I like where this is all going. So I'm going to add more of the iron and more of the patina spray. I'm gonna add more of 
the sandbar and just kind of go with this look. Um, so I, I move off to the sides. Everything that I did on the front of this piece, I brought to the sides. Now it's the next day and I'm ready for another layer. So here is the clear Dixie Bell's Besting Wax. It's, it looks white in the little jar, but once it goes on, it goes on clear. And I'm using the bell brush for this. I'm applying the clear wax pretty much everywhere that I put the patina. And now we're gonna use the Dixie Dirt in the color Earth, and I'm using my French tip brush, and I'm going to add some of this darker, it's sort of like a darker brown. And we're just adding layers at this point, and it's, it's just gonna give a nice textured look onto the piece. And here I'm going back with my chip brush and I'm adding a little bit more of that sandbar. So this is just layer upon layer to add an awesome texture onto the bottom of the piece. I take the piece outside and I'm gonna clear coat the entire thing with Dixie Belle's clear coat in satin, and I'm gonna use my sprayer for this. So I just dump my clear coat in there, put my sprayer together, and I get ready to spray. But right before I spray, I realize I did not use the mousses. I forgot to use the mousses, so I grab them. I have a mousse in garnet and one in amber. And I'm so happy that I remembered this because it they're absolutely the finishing touches. I was feeling like it was missing something and it's hilarious because this it was it was meant to be this way so I was I was really excited that I remembered I put some of the the garnet I did not use too much of it I just used it on the edges and that gave it a just a really cool metallic glisten on it and it made it a little bit darker because everything is really soft on there so I was it, that was perfect and then I went with the amber with my French tip brush and this I kind of I added over the garnet a little bit I added next to it and I even dabbed it on there because it gave it again like that metallic feel to it and only in spots so it's not like over the entire thing it just looks really really good and I let that dry outside in the sun for a couple hours and then I went back and I sealed my entire piece. I did three coats of the sealer on the entire piece. And here's a quick before and here it is after. I replaced the old knobs with nautical knobs to complete the look. I really hope that this piece goes to somebody's beach house. I think it would look really great in a beach house bedroom or maybe in the living room as an accent piece or hallway or something. I just, I love the way that it turned out. And I wanna say thank you to Dixie Belle Paint Company for sending me the mystery box. It was such a great challenge. And if you wanna see um, my other mystery box challenge, check out this one right here. I had a blast. I had a blast with both of these. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. And I will see you next time with another furniture makeover.